Kami. And you're watching Chicks World. And this week we're at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. About to talk to the most funny people you've ever laughed at. Let's go check them out. Chicks World. Hi, Paul Foot. Welcome to Chicks World. Um, oh, thanks so much. Thank you, Kami, for inviting me here. Yeah. You're it's very nice. welcome. It's nice. <laughs> it's, it's relaxing. <laughs> Well, I hope I've got a calming effect on you. Um, can you tell us a bit about your show that you've got coming up here at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival? Well, Carmi, I've got a show here at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. It's me in it. It's Paul Foot speaking. I'm <laughs> performing the show and it's called Still Life. That's the name of the show. I don't know why I called it that. The show title has no relation to the content of the show. You should ignore the title. The only reason you would need to know the title is if perhaps if you're booking, you might need to know the title. Can you tell us a bit about your glimpses? Ah, oh, that's a good question, Kami. Well, in the show, I do glimpses glimpses is humour that I do off the backs of these pieces of card that I cut out myself from larger parts of card and then I decorate them myself using pens and other media like uh, gold and highlighters and things like that and just like acrylic pens and things. But no, that's not important. The point is that at the back of the cards I write humour and I read the humour and say it to the audience and quite a lot of the humour. I mean, people laugh. I quite like doing the humour because people laugh. I see them laughing when I do the glimpses and then you can see them looking at each other as if to say, why are we laughing at this? And then they look back at me as if to get answers from me, but I have no answers. No one knows why the humour is funny, but it is. The glimpses work and that's all that matters, but no one knows why. That sounds amazing. No one knows why. No one. You're hailing from the UK. Can you tell us a bit about your influences, especially with women in the comedy field? Have you had any major women in your life that impact your comedic material? Well, I've had a number of sexual affairs <laughs> with a woman that has influenced my life. Basically... Do you remember their names by any chance? No, I can't remember their names because I was drugged. <laughs> I was against my will. <laughs> but the point is, those women took advantage of me and now my comedy career is payback time <laughs> for them. And um, you're the face of Virgin, how does that feel? Uh, the face of Virgin Mobile Australia, that's right. Not the whole of Virgin. Not the face of a Virgin. <laughs> Nor the face of all Virgins. All vir Virgins would have different faces. But I'm not there, I cannot help them. <laughs> okay, and I've heard you've got um, something called Penny in your show. Tell us about Penny. Well... Penny is a character that I play in the show where I place on, well I can't say, but I put on the costume and I also adopt acting, Kami, and I do oh, really? a character of Penny. Penny is a highly sexual woman, but also highly unpredictable. I've based her on many of the women that I've had the misfortune to have tumultuous affairs with over the years. <laughs> she is all of them, all of those women rolled into one. And when I get up on stage and perform the humour of Penny, it's payback time. I'm really interested.
interested to know what inspired your outfit. It's very retro and reminiscent of the 80s, I think. My outfit was invented by me. I'm self-styled. <laughs> Uh, each of the, for example, the sh silver and white shoes is a show business shoe. <laughs> and then the nice sock, the sock blends with the colour of the tie, as does this sock. All, this, all the t <laughs> colours go into the tie colour. You put a lot of thought in. Yes. The trouser, to show, the trouser of a businessman. The uh, chastity lock, because <laughs> I'm not letting those women ruin my life anymore. What's the code on it? <laughs> Kami, you must not ask me that question. Sorry, Please. all right, we'll move on. You're going to ruin me. Uh, the tie uh, to show businessmen and also quite a uh, colourful tie to show a businessman but a rebellious businessman. So you seem to idolise businessmen a little bit. Is it is this what you've modelled yourself on a, a bit? Yes, because sometimes when people try and get one over on you, you can say to them, you're not getting one over on me. I'm a businessman. Because a businessman always has the last laugh. <laughs> So, Cal Wilson, your 2011 comedy show was sold out. What have we got? You know, what have you got in store for us this year? Uh, this year's uh, show is called Cal Wilson is All Ears, and it's a combination of the stories that I tell the audience and that the audience tells me. So, my, my theory is that uh, someone's story is always funnier than a joke, and I just try and figure if that if that's true, and usually it is. <laughs> and you're described as someone that loves a good old yarn, especially if it's to do with personal peril or social awkwardness yes. or eavesdropping. Can you talk to us about that? Uh, well, my, I think the favourite thing that I've ever heard, uh, just overheard, I was in a hotel lobby, a bunch of women walked past, one of them pointed to the brochures by the lifts and went, see that? My ex left me with the stripper on that brochure. And I just went, that's the best thing I've ever, that is the power of advertising, isn't it? He's just going, I'll have that one. Uh, but I love, I just love eavesdropping. I love, um, I love stories of personal humiliation. I have a few of my own. Um, like? Uh, we used to have a kilt as a school uniform when I went to school. And uh, the buttonhole was a bit dodgy. And so I was um, biking home on my bike one afternoon. It suddenly felt a bit drafty. And I looked down and I realised that my kilt had fallen off and was stuck in the back wheel of my bike. So I was biking home in my brown tights and blouse with a big tartan flag out the back. Oh nice. So stories like that, so things like that. And the thing about when you tell a story that's embarrassing, it stops being embarrassing anymore, it becomes something fun and lovely. So I've based my entire career basically on humiliating moments from my life. Nice. Cal, do you have any female inspirations that you use for your work? Um, I guess people that inspired me when I started out, uh, French and Saunders, because um, they're just so funny and gorgeous and different. And um, uh, Ellen DeGeneres is an amazing stand-up comedian, and she was one of the first people I probably heard when I started out doing stand-up, and I just went, she's magnificent. Chicks, wow!